everybody. I am here uh, today with Magister Nicola, who is our Kingdom Law speaker, and she's going to talk to us today about um, what the Kingdom Law speaker is and what she does. So welcome, Nicola, and if you could just tell us a bit about yourself, that would be great. Hi there. I've been in the SCA for 30 years. <laughs> And actually, that, that does have something to do with being law speaker because it is, a, it is a position that you really need to have a long experience in the SCA to really be successful at. Um, so other than that, I've been lots of things. I've been chroniclers, I've been heralds, I shoot archery, I do embroidery, I do calligraphy and illumination, I do all those things. But for the last two and a half years, I've been law speaker. And that is a very different position than any other one I've ever held before in the SEA. I think the, the role of the kingdom law speaker is pretty, it's unique to our kingdom. So if you could tell us a bit about what your role is, is the kingdom law speaker um, and let people know what it is that you do. Sure, uh, you're, you are completely correct. Um, a little bit of a history lesson when Eldermere went kingdom over 20 years now ago now, it's like 22 years, uh, they created the position of law speaker at that time and actually was somewhat controversial uh, when this happened because no other kingdom had anything quite like it. And the, the position of law speaker is actually based on Icelandic law. And there was a person in Iceland during their, uh, during their, the period that we consider the uh, Icelandic Commonwealth, um, who was essentially the, the head elected official in Iceland, presided over law courts, presided over the legislative assembly there with, from all the chieftains and the judges and such, and every year recited one third of the law uh, from memory. So they usually serve wow. three years, just like I served three years. I wonder where they got that. And they were also the person that was responsible for really knowing the law inside and out and providing clarification on laws and also in handling disputes and assemblies. So that's kind of what I do in Eldermere. Uh, the duties are somewhat similar, of course, uh, adapted for our game, but uh, very real, real world type duties um, that are involved in being law speaker. So that's a little bit of the history and that's what's involved. So the main two things you do is you preside over the moot, um, which happens once per reign, as well as being a person that people can go to if they have concerns, uh, if they have disputes that they would like to have mediated and that sort of thing where just simply going to the kingdom officer or their local officer, maybe that didn't quite work and they want somebody who's neutral to step in and be able to do some mediation. So one of the things that you mentioned is the kingdom, which uh, is a major function of the law speaker's job. And I think um, the, the part of the job that, uh, the part of the office that the kingdom as a whole sees you actively doing because it happens each rain. So could you tell us more about the kingdom moots and how they work? Yeah, sure. Um, so the kingdom moot as uh, in kingdom law happens once per reign. And at the kingdom moot, if you've never gotten to see one, I highly recommend it. It will happen again at some point. Everybody takes off their crowns or coronets and uh, regalia and such because we all speak as equals in the moot. And that is a chance for anybody in the kingdom to bring up things that um, are of a concern to the kingdom or maybe projects you want to see happen or just things that are in discussion. Uh, they can be positive things. They can be not so positive things. Um, they're all about what can we do in Eldermere to make our experience in Eldermere better for Eldermere. And as opposed to society-wide issues, really the focus is Eldermere. So in the past, we've had all kinds of things like, um, for instance, how can, um, how can we better support demos and how can we support uh, Comic-Cons? And I'm thinking of just recent ones uh, that mm -hmm. where we've had these discussions. Or how can we support uh, inclusivity and diversity in Eldermere? 
So where we can all talk about these issues as elder Miriams and really uh, as opposed to just having that kingdom, that society level discussion, we can discuss it as elder Mir. And then the people who can make things happen can take these things back and we can make changes and we can adopt things or we can encourage each other to do things that other people have found successful and that kind of thing. So it usually lasts about an hour and we gather questions ahead of time. So usually we have two or three major questions that are on people's minds and everyone can come in and participate in the discussion and uh, have their voice heard. So that's the moot. And I think traditionally each mood is kicked off with the law speaker reading a bit of our kingdom laws, which Yes, that's uh, true. I do not recite know. one third of the kingdom law at every moot, but the tradition <laughs> is I read a law. And, and I, I think that would take up more than uh, a lot of the time that's allotted for the moots. <laughs> I will tell you one thing. Um, back when um, Aldemir went kingdom, uh, we had to have all of our kingdom law read into court and the law speaker started that process in, in the back corner of the hall when it happened. So the law speaker started off that process doing something very, very appropriate for a law speaker to do. Wonderful. That's really neat information. Um, so then you talked about the other function of the law speaker's role, which is to help with disputes. Um, is there anything else that you maybe wanted to say about that? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the hard part of being a law speaker. And that's where things get very, very serious. I mean, the moots are, are great and they're often a, a great time to uh, hear about what's going well and to encourage people to do better. But we do know that people have disputes and our kingdom does pretty well, I think, in settling a lot of the disputes before they ever get to the point where they would need somebody to help step in and mediate. But if ever that does happen, we have a process in kingdom law to, to handle that, starting with um, assuming that things have not worked out at the local level or between individuals, that uh, a person could approach the law speaker and say, I'm having an issue with another person. Um, can we have a discussion and can we have a mediation? And that would be the first step in that is the law speaker would sit down with that individual, um, find out what the issue is, and then eventually be talking to the other person or people involved in the dispute and hopefully bring people together to have a discussion to work on a problem, work on a solution that's going to be benefit both parties and be a successful um, outcome. And it's not used for the sort of disputes where um, somebody is doing something illegal. Um, those go through the, the, the legal means, uh, the kingdom seneschal and the other officers and that sort of thing. We're talking about the kind of disputes where it just doesn't seem to be working to have people uh, resolve them by simply talking to each other. And maybe they want a neutral party to step in and have be that eyes and ears. And if that process doesn't work, there's a whole um, chain of other um, mechanisms for the dispute to continue to be worked on to be resolved um, all the way up through a court of chivalry, um, which our kingdom has never had a court of chivalry. So I guess we've figured out for the most part how to resolve these disputes. So that's a good thing. And I think, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're also a person that people could go to for maybe ideas on dispute resolution that they don't necessarily want an official process, but they're not sure how to deal with the dispute within their local group, or they're just looking for some ideas um, on, on how to, to work things out. Back, we did a, an, uh, that officer symposium we did a couple years ago. I did a class specifically on conflict resolution. And I, I'm a person who's thought about that and uh, did, done a fair bit of reading. Um, I had a little bit of formal training in that in a class I took years and years ago. And uh, it's a useful skill and there's a lot of things about conflict resolution that somebody who's never tried it may not even know about um, to try. You know, it's, it's, a little more, it's a little more intense than simply sitting down and saying, let's just all work things out. There's a process to it. And mm -hmm. if you've never had any exposure to that process, it's not something you necessarily would be familiar with. So I can be a resource for that. 
um, and how to approach things uh, of that manner, disputes in that manner without um, inflaming them or making them worse. And yeah. if there are other people in the kingdom also who've been lost speakers and also have some experience with this as well. So uh, we're, I'm not the only person around who can do this work, but I'm a good resource if you need to talk to someone to find out who can help with that when you just want to bounce things off me. I'm happy to listen. Uh, that's my job, <laughs> listening. Well, and that's, that's a really helpful uh, resource for people. Um, because you don't always know where to go or you might not have an idea of even where to start on how to uh, work things out sometimes. Yeah. Because um, we're all people and sometimes we don't all get along. Yeah, and we don't like conflict. I mean, I don't like it particularly either, but uh, if you just ignore it, it doesn't go away. That's in general what happens. If you just expect it to solve itself, it's not gonna solve itself, so. Um, and people may not be experienced with that and people just may, may not even realize what resources there are. Um, and especially now that we have um, the society taking a, uh, an interest in making sure that uh, events are inclusive and that we're following the society's anti-bullying um, uh, policies which continue to evolve. I expect that they will continue to evolve what they're offering and the resources that they're making available as well. So it's something I've kept an eye on as that has evolved as well. Um, and I'm also being part of being law speaker means I'm familiar with the laws and not just the kingdom laws. I know Kapora. Um, I generally know how the sanctions process works. I know what's in it, what isn't in it. Uh, and I have a uh, a fairly deep knowledge of basically how law works in both the kingdom and the society. So I've seen it and I've been, you know, been involved to some extent as an officer and from various different positions and just having that familiarity of what is and isn't in law is super useful and policy as well, because it's not just law, it's policy. One of the things we've said is that the uh, our, our kingdom law speaker is pretty unique to our kingdom, but you're also unique as a kingdom officer, and it doesn't really work the way same way a lot of the other kingdom offices do. So, could you tell us a bit about that? Sure, I can tell you, the queen, what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. Um, I am not in fealty. Um, I cannot be in fealty for anything, um, which means I'm restricted in, in serving as an officer of any sort while I am law speaker. So I can't be a herald. I'm kind of uh, in suspended animation as it were as a herald. I can, I can um, work on scrolls and I can work on ceremonies and things like that, but I can't be warranted. Uh, because that's the whole chain of command. I have to be outside of that chain of command. Uh, the only exception we've made to that is being a marshal. I remain an archery marshal, but I do not um, act as a, as a group archery marshal, and I do not act as a marshal in charge at events, because you never know uh, when something might come along that is involved in that chain of command, and if I'm in it, that kind of is a conflict of interest. So I had to separate myself completely out of all those chains of commands. And so the way the law speaker is chosen is quite unique. It's chosen um, people, um, uh, people write in. Uh, this, this process is gonna be happening soon because my term is up in another seven months or so. So people write in and um, nominate people for the position of law speaker. Um, I mean, you say if you want to do it, obviously, and you, you get 12 people to nominate you for that. Uh, once you're approved as a candidate, then it goes out to a vote that takes place in each individual group. Uh, and the seneschal for each individual group, after consulting with the members of that group, casts the vote for who they want the law speaker to be. Um, and then once, once that happens, there's a special oath that I swear, which is directly to the people. I, it's kind of like fealty, but it's fealty to Eldamir, not to the crown. And that is the only oath I swear at all during my term. So I don't, I'm not up there doing my laurel oath or my pelican oath or anything like that. 
And to even to some extent, I separate my commentary as a peer out uh, from the public commentary because, again, it's that neutrality that is making sure that I am doing everything in my power to remain neutral and to be a person people could count on to uh, treat things fairly and without bias. I mean, we all have bias, but I have to try especially hard to make sure that if somebody comes to me, I'm not saying, oh, that's so-and-so's apprentice and I don't like them and ooh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be good to them. I have to make sure that I uh, am consciously trying to make sure that um, I'm treating people um, according to the law and according to policy and, uh, and dealing fairly with folks. And that means I can't be in an office, I can't be in fealty. And I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit apart from the law. Um, well, I'm not above the law, but I'm apart from a lot of the O's and stuff that make our game what it is. And it's kind of weird actually, but uh, it's the job. I think it's um, uh, having having been the kingdom central. It's uh, the only position that is a warranted officer um, under the seneschal's office. But you don't report to uh, you don't report to a society superior officer. You don't report to even the kingdom seneschal. I mean, you work in conjunction with that office, um, but it's not a there's there's no report. <laughs> yeah. So you're warranted through the seneschal's office so that you're on an officer's warrant, um, but uh, for the most part, completely outside of that and on the Privy Council as a non-voting member. That's correct. And the other thing I think to, which should be fairly obvious to this is that um, Everything that is brought to me, I keep in confidence. Um, obviously not moot questions and things like that, but if people come to me with a concern, I keep confidence about that. Um, any any time the law speaker does anything other than the moot, really, um, those discussions are confidential. And I don't tell their majesties, I don't tell the kingdom seneschal, I, you know, I use the resources. I will occasionally go and speak to other formal law speakers who know the job, but um, it's confidential. And that's part, again, that's part of what, what the oath is. Which is a very important part of that job. Yep. And one of the things you talked about was how long you hold, you hold the office for. So there will be in the in the coming months that process of seeking the next uh, kingdom law speaker. Um, I, you talked a little bit about the qualifications because of the fact that in the next couple of months you'll be looking for a successor. Um, is there anything else that you can think of? Maybe qualifications if somebody was considering the position um, that they might want to to have. So it helps to, it, again, it helps to have been in the society for a decent long time and to have observed it, is it at as many levels and as many locations as you can. Um, and to be aware not, not only of Eldermere, but of society law and things like that. Uh, a lot of times the people who, who take on the law speaker position are people who have been kingdom officers before. It's not absolutely necessary but it helps just so you can see how law and policy is applied. Uh, and it's somebody who needs to have gotten around. They need to know the kingdom. Um, they, you really can't be law speaker if you're active only in one group and you don't have that kingdom level perspective. So um, that and just experience and experience isn't necessarily a set number of years. It's, um, some people get experience much more quickly than others do and others um, are hey i've been in the society for 30 years like me uh it, it's uh it's basically feeling that you have a good idea of the dynamics of the kingdom um what the various groups are known for who is in the various groups and you know people you've uh, you've talked to people and at the same time, you have that capability of stepping back and saying, I can, if I needed to, I can step back and, and treat people with equity and fairness. So that's really what it is. 
it was the job I wanted to be when I grew up. Uh, when the job was first introduced, I said, that would be really cool to do that someday to, and not because it gives you any glory. In fact, um, there is no badge, there's no regalia. You are just a law speaker. You don't even normally wear much of your own regalia. I'm not wearing any medallions right now. I'm wearing some bling, but uh, no, no medallions. I don't wear my baronial coronet when I do this. And uh, so there's really no, nothing to be gained out of it. It's really a, a position where you are serving Eldermere and it's that servant leadership sort of thing. You are really in service to the kingdom, um, doing a job that is usually pretty cool, but can be difficult. It can be challenging. So you have to be willing to do both sides of that um, and to realize that there really isn't any glory to be gained from doing it, but you can have a huge effect on helping people and helping the kingdom by, by doing the job. I, I think, and I've seen it um, happening in other kingdoms where this is a position that we've had in our kingdom since we became a kingdom. Um, it's something that is just not necessarily called a law speaker, but it's a, a dispute resolution person uh, office um, that's starting to be introduced in other kingdoms. So we're kind of ahead of the game on that one, um, yeah. especially with um, the more and more um, guidance coming from society with the uh, with bullying and, and all of that and harassment being addressed. Um, so it's a good it's a good that we already have that footing and all that already in place um, and that resource for people as we get more and more guidance from society on that. Yep, it's been, um, it's been a rewarding experience. Again, it's, it's, you kind of got to be cut out for it, but on the other hand, it, doing a couple of the things like, um, I was asked um, by their former majesties, uh, Marian and Evander, to work on our state, the statement of virtues that they did during their reign, mm -hmm. um, when a lot of the, the initial issues around um, diversity, uh, inclusion, and those sorts of things came down at the, from the, some, some issues that happened at the society level and in other kingdoms, and we wanted to make a statement about what we believed as Eldermere. So I consulted with them on drafting that and, uh, and kind of shepherded it to, to, through the initial introduction. Um, again, they, did, they were very, they wanted me to do that because they didn't want it to be seen as something that it was just an Evander and Marian project. They wanted it to be as much reflective as the kingdom as possible, um, which is, you know, they, they asked me for some input and then they made it available for people, but it was, uh, signing it was something you did privately and, um, but the names just grew and grew and grew and it was clear that was something that was important for the kingdom and it was nice to have a hand in doing something like that. So that was one of the nice things about the job. And you helped um, with the pledge um, when we stepped up because of the fact that it's all virtual and uh, we haven't done fealties and stuff yet. You helped write the pledge, um, yep. we plead to the people and, and, and back. So um, yeah, yeah, that's been, it's the fun part of the job. I didn't expect to be writing something kind of ceremonial as law speaker, but yeah, that kind of that kind of fed my itch to write ceremony. But again, it was something to be meaningful while we were in this suspended state. But yep, we wanted to express um, what we felt about the kingdom and to, to do something meaningful. Um, if and again, it was something that people we put it out there for those who wanted to use it, and uh, I got great feedback from it that people thought, found it meaningful and were happy to do it and ha happy to have the chance to do something until we can all be together and do actual fealty. Yes, which hopefully, hopefully won't be <laughs> too, too, too much longer away. So um, I think that covers most things about the job of Kingdom Law Speaker. Anything else that you can think of to add? I'm still here if, if people, uh, in this time of isolation and, and, and we're sitting around doing things by Zoom, we are still 
a kingdom. We are still a people. Uh, there are still things that we might, when we next we have a moot, want to talk about. Maybe there'll be things that have been learned from this time in isolation that we've learned about ourselves. And so my ears are open. Um, the same thing goes for the more serious parts of it. And that even includes things like, uh, again, if you are wondering what's going on with Kapora or with, with society level things and or just have questions about how that all works. I'm here. Um, feel free to reach out. Elamir.lawspeaker at gmail.com. That's our email address. And that just goes to me. And I'm happy to talk to people and happy to listen and uh, give advice if needed and help people through good things and not so good things. And also stay tuned for the announcement again if you're interested in my job um, we want somebody to be interested in my job and if that sounds like a challenge that you feel like you have a calling to take it um, please apply when the time comes well thank you so very much nicola for telling us about what you do and giving us all uh, more information about the king of lost the figure so thank you very much for joining us my pleasure bye everyone bye